morning. Good morning. Calling all youth. The youth ministry will be meeting on every third Saturday of each month. And our next meeting will be on Saturday, January 21st, uh, 2023, in the annex of the church from 10 a.m. to 1130. And usually that would be followed by choir rehearsal. But since the, that date is after the third Sunday, please be listening for information regarding the next uh, rehearsal for the youth choir. The membership ministry of the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church uh, has resumed having their regular business meeting, and so they will continue to meet every second Saturday at 9.30 a.m. in each month. All are encouraged to join. The birth month ministries will resume having their monthly business meetings uh, in January 2023. So this will be on the second Saturday of this month at 9 a.m. Please come. Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Like the old saints used to say years ago, at the crack of midnight, it's another new year. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I thank the Lord. Thank you. Lord, I bless you. God has seen fit to let our moments roll on. Amen. Just a little while. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, mm -hmm. took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup. It's the New Testament in my blood. Mm -hmm. This do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he return. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, whosoever mm -hmm. shall eat this bread mm -hmm. and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly amongst you, and many sleep. Let us let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. I'm having to follow the Lord this again, that we come approaching your throne of mercy. We thank you for your grace, Amen. and we thank you for your mercy. Amen. We thank you because they are renewed every day. Amen. Not that we deserve it, mm -hmm. but because you are a good God. Yeah. We want to thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day. Amen. A day that we've never seen before. Lord, you have let us look upon the first day yeah. of 2023. Yeah. But we don't know what's in store for December 31st, 2023. But we are so glad that we serve a God 
who knows our ending yeah. from our beginning. Yeah. So we are going to lean and we are going to depend on you. Yeah. We are not going to let our heart be troubled for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised to us. Lord, we pray that you look down upon all those who are sick. Those who are shut in. And those who are bereaved. And Lord, there are so many in our neighborhood who are bereaving right now. But we know that you have all power in your hand. So Lord, my prayer that you will strengthen us where we are weak and build us up where we have been torn down. And we will be so very careful to give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Because you and only you are worthy to be praised. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God is a good God. And what is so good about the God that we serve? He don't make no mistakes. But what we got to learn to do we got to learn to respect the will of our Father yeah. who are in heaven. Yeah. Because his will is going to be done yeah. whether we agree with him or not. Yeah. So you might as well say, let your will be done. Yeah. Those of you who have your body, Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter, verse 30. 22nd chapter, verse 30. And it reads as follows. As I saw for a man amongst them, that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I find none. I find none. I want to use for a thought this morning, standing at the crossroad. My brothers and my sisters, we are a flock without an under shepherd. Uh -huh. Right now, we don't have an under shepherd. Right. All right. All right. But I have good news. Uh -huh. Let not your hearts be troubled. Right. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. My shepherd. Not uh -huh. And as long as we got the, the main shepherd, yeah. he, will he will supply us yeah. with an under shepherd yeah. in his own due time. Yeah. Yeah. The wall spoken of here is not made of stone, but of faithful people. United in their effort to resist evil. Uh -huh. We got a job before us. Yeah. Amen. The wall was in disrepair because there was no one who could lead the people back to God. The feeble attempt to repair the gap through religious rituals or messages based on opinion rather than God's will were as worthless as whitewash, only covering the real problem. Just covering it up. A dilapidated fence painted 
it look good. But that fence is still dilapidated. It's still shabby. It still is unstable. What the people really needed was total spiritual reconstruction. We need the Lord to intervene in our lives. God is testing us at this very moment. God want to know how we listen to what the preacher has been saying down through the years. A lot of us was just like Hebrews said. When we first came to Shiloh, we were babies. We had to have milk. Because uh -huh. we were not ready for solid food. Uh -huh. So the shepherd uh -huh. took us and put him in his breast, uh -huh. up to his breast, uh -huh. and fed us. Uh -huh. Now that God has told the under shepherd uh -huh. that your work in the vineyard is complete. Amen. Now, you stand back and see how prosperous you were in your teaching. When we give the appearance of loving God without living his way, we are not covering up sin that we are covering up sin that could eventually damage us deeply. Yeah. Amen. We can open our eyes in hell Amen. because we think we know everything, but we don't know nothing. We cannot do anything without the Lord. Don't use religion as a whitewash. Uh -huh. Repair your life by applying the principles of God's word. Uh -huh. Did you understand that? Uh -huh. Apply the principles of God in the word. Listen to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 3.15. Yeah. And I will give you shepherds uh -huh. according to my heart uh -huh. who will feed you with knowledge yeah. and understanding. Yeah. Amen. God has already yeah. predestined yeah. a shepherd right. to replace mm -hmm. pastor him. Amen. Who it is, we don't know. Amen. But if we lean and depend on God, he will reveal it to us by and by. Amen. He didn't say it was going to be today. He didn't say it was going to be December the 31st. Uh -huh. In God's own time, in his own way, God will resupply the pulpit of shallow missionary Baptist church. For God so loved the world, he sent. Jesus did not come on his own. God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When God sent his only begotten son, Jesus and his disciples 
was walking alone. And Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Or Jeremiah, some of the other prophets. Jesus said, that's not what I asked you. Who do you say that I am? Peter, in his bold way, said, thou art the Christ. Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Man is nothing but flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot reveal to you who the honest chef is going to be at Shiloh, Michigan. Jesus said, for that testimony, I'm going to use that as a foundation. Up on this rock, what you said, Peter, I will build my church. Everywhere you go in the Bible, when God got ready for a sermon, God chose his servant by himself. God reserved the right to himself to fill this pulpit. No man, no committee, no exploratory committee has the right without God's blessing to let anybody stand behind this sacred pulpit. God could not find a spiritual leader to guide the people in godliness. Why not Ezekiel? A qualified leader is useless if people refuse to be leaders. I don't care how qualified the lead is. If the people refuse to lead, let that leader lead them, he is useless. That's why we need to take up a prayer and will. Calling upon the Lord to intervene at Shiloh on our behalf. Send us a God feeling man. Woman. Send us someone that is obedient to the word of God. Lord, that's what we need. Send us someone that is strong in their walk with the Lord. Lord, send us someone that is not learning your word, but someone who has already been studying your word down through the years. Someone that has shown themselves approved unto you, a holy and a righteous God. Lord, that's what we need. Lord, we need somebody that is ready to stand in the gap. Someone that is prepared to stand in the gap. Lord, we need someone and that's your legion. Read the third chapter of Ezekiel. 
1 Timothy 2.21, and the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel, verses 1 through 6. The watchman that stands on the wall, God said he got to be vigilant. Not only looking outside the wall, but he got to look inside the wall. There are enemies of our Lord outside, and there are enemies inside. The watchman got to tell what he sees. He got to reveal it to the people. So when he revealed it, if they take heed to what he say, they'll go and hide themselves. But if they refuse to hear what the man on the wall is telling them, they're going to die in their sin. But the man on the wall, God going to look upon him favorably. Because he saw trouble coming, he warned the people. He gave them a chance to hide. But they were bold and they didn't do it. We got to have a man on the wall that would let a yay be a yay and a nay be a nay. He got to be strong enough to tell you what thus says the Lord. And if you don't know what thus says to your Lord, the man on the wall going to tell you to go and look at this book and at this chapter and at these Amen. verses uh -huh. and you will find out yeah. what God has in store right. for you. Amen. God, Lord Jesus, Intercepted Paul Saul on the Damascus Road. Right. Paul Saul. Mm -hmm. Oh, Paul wanted to Saul wanted to destroy the church. Yes. But Paul was responsible for 13 books in the New Testament. Yes. God intercepted Saul on the Damascus Road. Uh -huh. A bright, bright light shone from heaven yes, all around. Mm -hmm. Knocked Paul off his beast. Mm -hmm. He fell down a sinner. Uh -huh. But he got up a saint. Hey, hey. He fell down yeah. physically sin. But he got up yeah. spiritually. Yeah. See. Yeah. Thank God already. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. by the name of Ananias, uh -huh. he's trying to tell God what God already knows uh -huh. about what Saul has done. God chastised Ananias in his own way. Uh -huh. I'm going to paraphrase this. Mm -hmm. I told you to go <laughs> down on Straight Street. Uh -huh. And there is a man down there praying. Yeah. Oh, Paul, oh, Saul, praying now. Yeah. Yeah. Because when do you need God? In your weakest hour, right? Yeah. Paul cannot physically see. Yeah. But he's praying because he can spiritually see. Yeah. Yeah. He remember what happened on the Damascus Road. Yeah. Lord, who are you? Yeah. With so much power yeah. that you have done what you've done to me. Jesus, I am Jesus whom you persecute. Uh -huh. yeah. He talked in Paul's own language. Don't you know it's hard to kick against the prayer? Yeah. Yeah. And I 
pray and I hope you know what a prick is. Uh -huh. yeah. That was these unruly oxen. Uh -huh. yeah. So what they would do, they used to call it something like a single tree. Uh -huh. They would put it right behind the horses where he kicked. Uh -huh. And they put sharp stakes uh -huh. all along the prick. And when that ox keep back, he won't make that mistake. <laughs> Just like Paul. He's not going to persecute God's church no more. No more. No more. Amen. <laughs> he was talking to the resurrected Jesus. That's why Paul said later, I give it all of everything I have, everything I ever will have. I give it all up just so I can know the power of his resurrection. Ain't that what you want to know? I want to know the power of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus sent Paul to Arabia. He stayed there three years. Or so. And when he came back, I always like to say that when Paul went to Arabia, see that the disciples were tutored by Jesus in the flesh. I always like to say when Paul went to Arabia, he was tutored by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Paul had a one-on-one -on -one uh -huh. teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul was said that I said at the feet of Gamaliel. Uh -huh. And Gamaliel was, I'm talking about he was high class. Mm -hmm. He was one of the best teachers of that day in time. Paul said, I said at the feet of the man. Mm -hmm. Now, I can t let Moses come and tell you that he tried to do things his way. Yeah, well. He went down, he, when he was in Egypt, he wanted to do God's will. But God had not yet called Moses. Moses saw two Egyptians fighting. And the next day, he came up and asked him, why are you fighting? You're brothers. Man, one of the Israelites told him, who made you? God. That you can tell us what to do. Because Moses killed the Egyptian yesterday. So the man said, Are you going to kill me like you did the Egyptian on yesterday? Fear came on Moses. Moses said, They know. Everybody else knows. Moses. Flee yeah. into the desert. Yeah. He went to Jethro High. Mm -hmm. But as time went along, some theologians said Moses lived to be 120 years old. Mm -hmm. 20, uh, uh, 40 years, Moses really thought he was somebody special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the next 40 years, God showed him, I can take you, think you something, and I can make you nothing. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. He lived on the backside yes, of the desert for 40 years. Yes, yeah. And God said, now nah, the time is right. Uh -huh. The next 40 years, God said, now nah, yeah. is the time. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you I can take nothing yes. and make something yes. out of it. Yes. Moses, the lawgiver, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Moses was a friend of God. Uh -huh. 
Moses had to go. We all, one day, we got to go sleep with our father. And Moses, time for him to go sleep with his father had approached. God told Moses, go on top of Mount Nebo. Look to the east, west, north, and south. That's the land that I'm not going to let you go over to see. Moses had been asking God on occasion to let him go over. God means what he says. Yes, he does. He's not going to relent. That's right. So Moses asked God one time about crossing over the Jordan to the promised land. God said, I have already told you, you are not going across. And he said, don't ask me no more. <laughs> Moses went to the Lord. He said, I'm not going across the Jordan River. But he said, who is going to lead the people across? All right. Listen, God told Moses, Get your servant Joshua Amen. and bring him to the meet of ten. The ten of me. Bring him with you. And when Moses brought Joshua there, Moses laid his hand on his head. Now you deacons and your millers know while doing your ordination mm -hmm. they, they lay their hand yes. on your head. Yes. Amen. When Moses laid his hand on Joshua's head some of the power that God had given Moses transferred to Joshua. That's right. Amen. And Joshua is known as one of the greatest generals that ever lived. He led the people across the river Jordan. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses' assistant said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise. Go over this joy, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them and the children of Israel. God told Joshua three times. In the first chapter of Joshua, uh -huh. verses 6, 7, and 9, All right. God told Joshua to be strong, uh -huh. be of good courage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And in that ninth verse, he said, be strong and be very uh -huh. courageous. And he said, well, so ever you go, I will go with you. Yeah. What have you to fear yeah. when God Amen. is with you? Yeah. Why let your heart 
heart be troubled. Amen. Because God told Reverend Hill mm -hmm. enough. Amen. Close up your book, Pastor Hill, and go home and wait for my following instruction. Yeah. Right. Reverend Hill is in a waiting mode. He's waiting on the Lord. God See, he would send us a pastor according to his heart. God, the son, Jesus, sent Paul to do the work that he had for him. Go and teach the Gentiles what they must do to be saved. Mm -hmm. What they must do to inherit eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. God the Father. Mm -hmm. God the Son. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody is missing. <laughs> the Spirit told me to go to Acts, the 13th chapter, All right. verse 2. All right. Talking about Barnabas and Saul. All right. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul uh -huh. for the work to which I have called them. Uh -huh. Only God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit can yeah. call yeah. anybody yeah. to occupy yeah. this book. Uh -huh. yeah. No one else yeah. is qualified. Yeah. Your job yeah. is Jesus has gone up mm -hmm. in a class. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you what the apostles did. All right. I want to read it into your hearing. It is in Acts mm -hmm. chapter 2. All right. Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. You want to know what you got to do? <laughs> Assemble yourself together and take up a prayer and well. Telling God, asking God to send me, send us, someone who will lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. We need the Lord to help us. By this time, you should be spiritual mature. Amen. You ought to be teachers. Amen. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Amen. 
That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised mm. to discern both good and evil. Amen. No one should be able to tell you what the thief come to do. Because you should already know. You say you're overseers in the house. Correct? If don't nobody else in this place know that the thief only come to steal, to kill, and to destroy everything that Jesus stands for. You told a lie. Because I was ordained as a deacon too. I remember one thing that they asked me that always stuck in my mind. They asked me, do you want to be a deacon? Now, was I saying I do to be a show to the down and outside world just to go out and tell people I'm a deacon down there at that church? See, now it's time for you to earn the respect that a deacon deserves. Now, you got to stand in the gap until an honor shepherd come along to replace you. You got to do what the Bible says for you to do. Nowhere in the Bible did the Lord tell you to preach. He told you to be a servant. Some people say you should be a, a under shepherd, arm bearer. You are there to assist him. Your duties is to serve the church. Amen. You should be the one that visits the sick and shut. See, we have seen Pastor Hill go and we stood back neglecting our responsibility. The Bible said if you are sick, send for the elders. Have you ever looked up that word elders? In other words, they're saying send for the deacon. They said send for the pastor. Brothers, it's time to get in the word. It's time for you to ask God, what will you have me to do? Timothy listen to Paul. Mm -hmm. All right. uh -huh. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, I want you to listen to me. My son in the ministry. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm paraphrasing this. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do about God's business, you got to know what God require you. So, Paul told you, Timothy, Timothy, you need to study. You need to get you some study time. 
You need to show yourself approved yeah. unto God. Yeah. I'm not talking about men. Mm -hmm. That's right. Men ain't got no heaven or hell to get you. Yeah. You show yourself approved to God because I want you to become a workman that have no need to be ashamed. You need to know how to rightly divide the word. If someone got a problem and you are on your way to somewhere else, if you don't have the time to explain them what thus says the word of God, what you got to do is point them where they need to go. So the Holy Spirit can teach them yeah. What does yeah. say yeah. the word yeah. of God? Amen. You got to get to a point yeah. where you can act, knowing that it's gonna be given to you. Yeah. That you're gonna go seeking, yeah. and you know that you're gonna find it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're gonna knock yeah. and the door yeah. gonna be open yeah. unto you. Because you have shown yourself approved unto God. Amen. God yes. will answer yes. your prayer. Yes. God yes. will teach you what to ask for yes. and what yes. not to ask for. Yes. Amen. He will show you the way to go. James teaches us if you like wisdom, you got to ask God. That is the only place that gives wisdom. You can't go to the university and get wisdom. You cannot go to some big factory and get wisdom. If you desire wisdom, you got to ask God in heaven who gives freely and he is not present. He will give it to you. Jesus told his disciples, all power is given unto me in both heaven and in earth. Ask the Lord and he will give it to you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come unto the Father but by me. When you come to this sacred book, Dennis, you are standing before God Almighty. You the book death is elevated above all the other seats in this house. It's not just in the New Testament. Isaiah 55 and 6, 55 and 6 tell us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call up on his name yeah. while he is near. Yeah. God has never been closer to us than he is right now. God got an all seeing eye. Saul was King Saul 
was rejected uh -huh. as king over God's people. That's right. Because he disobeyed That's right. the voice of the Lord. Amen. You know, Samuel 15, 22. When Samuel had disobeyed God for the second time, he told him to go to the Amalekites. He said, I want you to kill them all. Man, women, boy, girl, and any animal that you see. Kill them all. But Saul kept the best animal. And he didn't kill King Agar. Like God had told him to do. But God sent Samuel to him and told him. And you can uh, look at this for yourself in 1 Samuel 13, 14. God sent Samuel to tell Saul that your servants, I'm paraphrasing this now, yeah. your servants are no longer needed. Amen. Because I have found a man after my own heart. Yeah. I'm going to make him command yeah. over my people. Yeah. When God says he's going to do something, Except in a few rare instances where God did relent. Right. Yeah, yeah. But God uses a yea is a yea and a nay yeah. is a nay. Yeah. 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 Amen. Samuel told Saul, your days are numbered because of this obedience. Aaron had four sons. Nadab, Medad, and Nadab, Medad, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Those were Moses. Those were Aaron's four sons. And they all had been ordained as priests. But Nadab and Abihu took their senses and they went and they put incense on there and then they put the fire in there and then they went before the throne of God. God causing fire to come out and consume them because they were disobedient to the word of God. God's word has already gone out. Right. It's not going to return to hell. And he's not going to rearrange his word to suit you under no circumstance will God do that. God's word is pure as fresh mm -hmm. as the spring rain. Mm -hmm. He's not going to change his word yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. God killed Aaron's two oldest sons. Mm -hmm. That's why after you get past Leviticus, the 10th chapter, the high priest is always referred to as Eliezer. He was the third son. Mm -hmm. He was the one that carried on the work of God. Mm -hmm. God told Sam, I want you to go to Jesse's house. All right. 
I told you God had found a man after his own heart. Yeah. He's to go to Jesus' house. Yeah. If you're scared, take a heifer with you. Yeah. But I want you to go to Jesus' house. Yeah. And I want you to ordain or you are to anoint the man that I have chosen. And when Jesse, when Samuel got to Jesse's house, the first one he saw was Jesse's only son. And His name was the only boy name was Jethro. His name was Anyway, <laughs> his only son, when Samuel saw him. Elias, Ithamar, and the third son, Shamia. But Elias was the only son. Mm -hmm. He was tall mm -hmm. and he was good looking. Mm -hmm. So Samuel said, I know this is the one. A man yeah. thinking mm -hmm. in his own feeble minded yes, way. God told Samuel, he's not the one. You are looking at the outward appearance. But God looks on the heart. He's not the one. Billy Dad, the second son, he's not the one. Shemiah, the third son, He's not the one. Four more sons besides those three passed by sin. God said, none of them is the man after my own heart. Samuel so said, Jesse, are you sure? Are these all of your sons? Just enough. I got one little red-headed Rudy guy out there. My baby boy. He's out there tending the sheep. Some just stand fast. And we ain't going to do nothing till you go and get him and bring him here. And we ain't got day. Then the Lord said, this is the one. This is the one I sent you to. Yeah. When he told Samuel to go to Jesse's house, he didn't take your flight field with all. Because we're going to do some anointing today. And he anointed David in the presence of Jesse and his eight brothers. Mm -hmm. He anointed. Yeah. God don't make no mistake. That's right. That's right. That's right. And God don't change his mind. Mm -hmm. My brother and my sister, we are standing at the crossroads. Uh -huh. Amen. 
And one thing that I want to bring back to your memory. Have you noticed that for the last two or three months, Reverend Hill would always incorporate this verse of scripture into his sermon. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what he was preaching about, it was like the Holy Spirit was telling yeah. him, you need to say this yeah. verse of scripture to my people yeah. so that they would know yeah. how yeah. to conduct yeah. themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are at the crossroad for life. Uh -huh. And you're going to remember it when I read it to you. And I want you to remember this scripture because this is the verse of scripture that Reverend Hill will remind us time and time and time again. Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your eyes will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. Walk in it. Reverend Hill was trying to tell you how to do things God's way. The scriptures teaches us that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our comforter, and our guide. Listen to what does yeah. say the word yeah. of God. Amen. And he will lead yeah. and guide you all the way yeah. from earth yeah. to glory. Yeah. If you do it God's way, yeah. Jesus is preparing a place yeah. for you and for me. And if you do things God's way, yeah. he going to come back yeah. one day yeah. and receive us yeah. unto yeah. himself. Yeah. That where he is, That's right. there yeah. we will be yeah. also. Yeah. Thank you, God. God, me.
sisters a benediction for those who might not be able to stay for the communion service. We'll give the benediction, and if one, anyone has to leave for some reason or another, you might quietly pass or dismiss the service. Let us bow our heads. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I pray and I hope that everyone has that paraphernalia for the communion service. If you do not have the cup, let it know by raising your hand. The scripture has already been read. We got one bag in my brother. Right here. Would you raise your hand? Here you go. Okay, that's it. <laughs> In your own time. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You have a sincere desire. Thank you, God. And that is good. It was on the same night that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread. He broke it. He passed it amongst his disciples. He said, this bread represents my body, which shall be broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me you may eat. After they had finished supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he says, This cup is New Testament in my blood. He says, I shall not drink it with you again mm -hmm. until I drink it with you anew uh -huh. in my Father's kingdom. But as often as you drink of it, you yeah. do show forth my death to I return. You may drink it. Then all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. After the benediction is administered, we're going to ask anyone that has a desire to give a gift or offering of time. The brother will be standing as we exit to my rear out of the two doors behind me. Now unto him that is able to keep us from stumbling, to present us faultless before his majesty, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory, mercy, dominion, power, both now and Amen.